All right.
I'm excited that God's in control. We get ready to, to celebrate the birth of Christ. Amen? Amen. And because we know, look, we can celebrate it because we know he lives. Amen? amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen twice. Amen. <laughs> Glory. All right, here we go. Ready? Because, because he lives. Ready?
everybody is so good. This is my favorite, my favorite uh, Christmas song, which nobody ever talks about as being a Christmas song, but this is my favorite Christmas song, it's my favorite Easter song, it's my favorite all in between song. Amen. Jesus loves me. We're here because Jesus loves us. Right, Ben? I have to get this thing in 
blood shall surely by for my forehead. For unto us a child is born, under up, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. In other words, the world upon his shoulders, as he is here to save us. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of the government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order, to order it and to establish his with judgment and with justice and henceforth even forever. When he came, he brought us a peace that shall go on as long as we go on. And that is what Advent is all about, is preparing for that celebration, that peace, that celebrating the first coming and celebrating the fact that there will be a second coming. And that's it for me today, folks. God is so, 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 so good. We trust him, and I know that God's got something special for us. Amen. There you go. And it's amazing, though, man, of course, it's the is Christmas, and they're going to use the same scripture, but uh, <clears throat> I was talking with the Lord, meeting him for having a little conversation, and he told me not to be long with him today. Turn the mic on. Is my mic on? No. So I can be long with him even more. Check, check. There you go. <clears throat> Not to be long. He's, me and him were talking. He said, it'll be long with him today. So good. We got the parade. So this is part one. And next week on Christmas Day, somebody said, why are you want I actually heard somebody say, <clears throat> I'm not kidding. And I know people have plans. And some plans can't be broken and all that. But I heard somebody say, why do you want to have church on Sunday and ruin everybody's Christmas? I heard that. Not here. Praise God. But I heard that. Why do you want to why do you want to have church on Christmas Day and ruin Christmas for everybody? Uh, the reason that we're here is because Jesus Christ was born. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Lord. That's right. Amen. And so we're gonna have we're gonna have service next week. It might not be a long service, but it's gonna be a good service. And 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 I am thanking God for the service next week. Now I was reading up, and, and I know y'all talk about it, get a new book, get a new book, get a new book. This is a new book. I've been reading all my old Christmas uh, jokes, but this is a new one. All right, brand spanking new. If y'all don't like it, I, I, I can tell y'all who to blame. All right, ready? When the father asked his little boy what he wanted for Christmas, the boy replied, a baby sister. As it turned out, the wife was pregnant and delivered on Christmas Eve. So on Christmas Day, she brought home a brand new baby sister for their son. Isn't that sweet? The next year, the father asked his little boy what he wanted for Christmas. The boy said, well, if it wouldn't be, wouldn't make mommy too uncomfortable, I'd like a bunny. <laughs> That's got to sink in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, all right. This is why I said burn the book. Amen. That's the first page of the new book. Amen. Christmas 2022, Isaiah 9 and 47. I don't know if you've been hiding under a rock lately, uh, but it, have you noticed that this has become a very, very crazy time that we live in? We live in a time where Honestly, everything is just absolutely flying off the hook. I look around, and, and, and as I look around, what I see is people want peace, but we don't call it peace, we call it unrest. That's a big unrest in the world, which peace is the solution, but this unrest. And, and if you'll notice, this is just a little bit. This isn't even, this isn't even half of it. The watchword of the day is unrest. There's civil unrest. There's racial unrest. There's economic unrest. There's health care unrest. There's global unrest. Has anybody heard that lately? Oh, yeah. You watch the news, you see what's going on. It's all over the place. Amen. Well, the most sought word of this day is rest. Unrest is the byword, but people want rest. 
They want things to calm down a little bit. They want things to, to get better. So what I've discovered is that the real rest is actually God's peace. And it's only found with God's rest. Now God's rest is not a cessation of activity, but it's relief in the midst of it. So when God steps in on the scene, that doesn't mean everything stops. It just means now people get a different perspective and they get, begin to see things in a different way. Right now, everybody's seeing things in their own way. Just like in the book of Judges, it said everybody did what was right in their own eyes. And every time they did what was right in their own eyes, Israel would be in a very uh, climatic state. It was just very common for just to be torn to pieces. And they would pray to God, and God would send a deliverer. They'd get their eyes back on God, get God's perspective. And pretty soon, when that judge would die, then they would start seeing things through their own eyes, doing what's right in their own eyes. And when they start doing things, that's what's going on in our nation, in the world today. Everybody's doing what's right in their own eyes. And that's the problem. And so I'm telling you, it, the world is starting in some places to wake up and to know that the only solution is in God. And so God's fixed, I believe with all my heart, <clears throat> even as all this calamity is going on around us, God's raising up, uh, I want not, maybe not a great big judge like in the book of uh, Judges, but little bitty guys all around that God's going to use to tell people, you may be one of them. You may be the guy on your job. You know, it, 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 when I was working in Fountain and they were having race season or, or they were having uh, a sales season, everybody's going around and their nerves were shot and I'd go around smiling. And they'd tell me, this thing's falling apart and this is doing this and this is doing that. Can you jump on it? Yeah, I will. And they go, why do you keep smiling? Why aren't, why aren't you running around chewing your nails and going crazy like everybody else? And I said, because I know somebody's in control and it's not me. And it's amazing how people would come to me and I'd wind up praying people through to salvation in boats, uh, on the dock, after work, whenever they would call me and say, can you please come here right now? And I'm thinking there's a big crisis and the crisis was there saying, look, I saw you this morning and I saw how peaceful you were and I saw that, that you were not, uh, you, you had rest where everybody else was full of unrest and I just need to have what you got. And we would pray right there on the spot. It's amazing how people will notice this. God's raised up a bunch of us and let people know that there's still rest in this world. That there's still a way for us to do it. And the biggest thing is not to get our eyes, do it, do it our way, but to do it his way. So, just so you know, I love this tonight, it changed everything. Just so you know, this is a new problem. I was talking about the book of Judges. That's one of, the, one of the older books in the Bible. But this problem has been around for thousands. I mean, thousands of years. And, and although, listen, although the causes are many, the solution isn't. The solution is so simple, yet it's so complicated. And that is, watch this, here it is. Back up, back up there, bro. There we go. Who's running this thing anyway? Who's running? Oh, I am, okay. For the yoke of Israel's burden and the staff are robbed for the goading, their shoulders to rot of their pressure, you have broken as in the day uh, of Gideon with Midian. For even trampling warrior's boots and all his armor in the battle tumult, even or every garment rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, a son, <coughs> a son is given, <coughs> and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from the latter time forth, even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now, now, now this is Isaiah's day. Let me just tell you a little, little, get a little history, a little background of what's going on when Isaiah brings this. Now, now I love this, look. See that cross in front of us, the son is given, and the child is born, a child is born, and the son is given. Watch this. Isaiah's day. Now, when Isaiah came along, it was a tough time for Israel. It was a very tough time for Israel because some people were going into captivity. Some people were coming out of captivity. Some were going in, some were going out. But no matter which way you were going, there was a whole lot of suffering 
and there was a whole lot of pain. I think about the day we live in right now. You know what? There's a lot of suffering in this world. There's a lot of pain in this world. There's a lot of misunderstandings going on. There's a lot of people. The Bible says in the last days that, 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 that parents should be against their children, children against their parents, you know, brother against sister, all this stuff's going on, and this is the time we live in. I, I see it. I mean, I see this going on, and, and, and if you weren't prepared for it, it would actually blow us away, but I know God said it's coming. Okay? So now, there's suffering, there's captivity, there's pain. Sometimes people were going into all this captivity and suffering for something they did, and sometimes they did it for something that somebody else did. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. Y'all say it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter why you're in this. Listen, the pain is still the same. You can't change it. The pain is still the same. Y'all say the pain is still the same. Pain is still the same. Get ready. The cure is still the same. Y'all say the cure is still the same. The cure is still the same. Amen. You know what that cure is? I love it, a child. Amen. Emmanuel, God with us. Very, very powerful. Now, now, I'm not gonna keep you long. I already told you this. It's just a little bit more, and then we're gonna we're gonna pray. But I, I do want to show you something here. Again, a night the night that changed the world. Turnaround was coming during his, during Isaiah's day. God was fixing to turn the page. I can't help but tell you, all I could hear when I was writing this was the Lord told me to say it emphatically more than one time is some of y'all need to understand that for your life, the page is getting ready to turn. Something good is getting ready to happen. God's getting ready to break forth. He's going to show you something in a very powerful way. So y'all say this thing. Y'all say this with me. My page is getting ready to turn. Say it. My page is getting ready to turn. Now point to somebody and say, your page is getting ready to turn. Your face is getting ready to turn. Something special is getting ready to happen. You can't go by what you see. you got to go by what you know. Amen? If you go by what you see, you're going to get discouraged. Go by what you know. Our page is getting ready to turn. Now, now let, me, let me read uh, uh, verses 1 through 5. And this sums it up. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as it was in her vexation, when at first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward he did grievously afflict her, afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. They joy before. They accorded that before they according to the joy of the harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is confused noise, and garments rolled in blood, but it shall be that shall be burning, uh, burning the fuel of fire. In other words, he's saying is y'all had a bad time. It's been rough. There's been a lot of bad things going on. But God's getting ready to do something about it. Look at somebody again and say, God's getting ready to do something about it. God's ready. Turn around and look at somebody again and say, God's getting ready to do something about it. Amen? Watch this. Get ready. Here it goes. I want to, every time you see this, I want y'all to say this aloud. When you see it come up, I want you to say it. It will not always be like this. Say it. It will not always be like this. Better days are ahead. Say it. Better days are ahead. God has a plan. God has a plan. Give him a chance to work. 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 Amen. Let me tell you something. It may not come when you expect it. It may not come like you expect it or how you expect it. But he is always on time. The Bible says the fullness of time has come. He sent forth his son. So now here we go. This is so awesome. This is the scripture we just read. And I love that movie. The Divinity is so awesome. Get ready. You know what I think about, what I like about these modern movies about Jesus? Is uh, the older movies were kind of made them look like they were theatrical. And, and, and Jesus, I saw one last night, and it made Jesus look like he was a Shakespearean actor. 
And Jesus wasn't a Shakespearean actor. Jesus was a common man. And Jesus knew what it was like to hurt. You know, as a matter of fact, we just sang it away in a manger. <clears throat> It says the cattle were lowing, lowering, or in other words, the cattle were making noise, and the poor baby wakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he made. That's not true. That's just a song. That's poetic. Guess what? He was born as a man, so he would know. He was born as a child, a poor child, in the worst of conditions, so that he would know, he would know what it's like to be brought up in those bad conditions. You say we think, didn't think Jesus ever wore a diaper. Did Jesus never wore a diaper? He wore a diaper. He never got any childhood diseases. He got childhood diseases. The Bible said that he was afflicted in every way as we are, but yet without sin. So he knows what it's like. So here it is. Unto us a child is born. That's a cradle. That's his humanity. I, I love this, these scriptures here. Hold up here. There we are. Job 9, 33. If there was only a mediator between us, someone who could bring us together. That's Job talking. Because now Job is talking to his friends. And his friends are trying to tell him how bad off he's been. And Job is thinking that God is just, just, just fried him. And he says, there's just somebody that could go in between us. Because God is God and we are men. There's nobody to go between us. We need a daysman between us. I, I love some of the versions of this. The Amphi version says, There's no umpire between us who might lay his hand upon us both with, with that there were that he may take his rod away from him, threatening me, and then the fear of him might not, be, might not terrify me. I, I love the message version of this. How I wish we had an arbitrator to step in and let me get on with life. Woo. I'm going to stop right there for a minute. That's powerful. Yeah. And you get moving along, you get doing things, and, and by the time you get doing it, something happens and you have to stop. I like what John Lennon said, said uh, 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 life is what happens while you're, well, I forget how he says it now, but, but life is what happens uh, while you're trying to live. Amen? Things just keep changing. Amen? You're trying to get things done, and while you're trying to get things done, something else happens. We'll read it one more time. I wish we had an arbitrator to step in and let me get on with life. To break God's death grip on me, to free me from this terror, so I could breathe again. Wow. So I say, wow. wow. Job was right. We got to have some eye that, so that's what God did. The Bible said in John 1 and 14 that the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The Amplified Version. And the Word Christ became flesh, human, incarnate, and tabernacled, or fixed his tent of flesh, and lived a while among us. And we actually saw his glory, his honor, his majesty, such glory as, as the only begotten Son receives from his Father, full of grace, favor, loving kindness, and truth. So, so he says, Unto us a child is born. That was the cradle. Then the next, remember. I did this, I think, last year, year before last, that, that I compared the cradle to the cross, and it's amazing how the cradle and the cross, they are so much alike, just one's at his birth and one's at his death, but everything is so much alike. So there's the cradle, and there's the cross in the background. So, so watch this. He saw a cross. Unto us a son is given. Now that word given, that's his deity, that means to be delivered up, to be brought before to suffer. So, as a child, he was brought to us in order to see, in order for a perfect sacrifice, the days were between, between us, he had to be 100% man and 100% God. Not 50-50. People say he's 50-50. No, 100% man, 100% God. So as a child is given, or a child, a child is born, that's the 100% man. Unto us the son is given. That is the 100% God. He's given because man cannot atone for our sin. It takes the blood of Jesus Christ. So that's his deity. Romans 5 and 6 says, We were utterly helpless. Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Uh, I like that five version. While we were yet in our weakness, while we were yet powerless to help ourselves, at the fitting time Christ died for and in behalf of the ungodly. Wow. That is so, so powerful. I want to read one more version uh, to you. Let's see if I got this thing up. Here it is. Romans 9 and 6, the message. 
Christ alive, Christ arrives right on time to make this happen. He didn't and doesn't wait for us to get ready. Oh, isn't that cool? I hear people all the time say, when I get doing better, I'll go to church. When I get feeling better, I'll go to church. When, when, when I start living right, I'll go to church. I promise you, if you wait until you get living right to go to church, you won't go. Amen. Christ arrives right on time to make this happen. He did and doesn't wait for us to get ready. He presented himself with the sacrificial death, but we were far too weak and rebellious to do anything to get ourselves ready. And even if we hadn't been so weak, we wouldn't have known what to do. Man, that is so, so powerful. So, the final word, it is finished. God for us. So God with us, Emmanuel. When he said it is finished, it was God for us. I love this. Satan thought that he had won, but the cross, on that cross was our almighty God. And guess what? He don't lose. God don't lose. All right. And one more. I'm getting ready to close. And then, he saw a crown. The government was shall be upon his shoulders. That's his lordship. The Bible says in the beginning is the word. Watch. John 101, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. Again, I, I love reading different versions of this because it's so powerful. In the beginning, before all time, was the word Christ, and the word, the, the word which was Christ, and the word was with God, and the word was God himself. He was present originally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him. Without him was not even one thing made that came into being. The message version. The word was first. The word was present to God. God present to the word. The word was God and readiness for God from, one, from day one. Everything was created through him. Nothing, not one thing came into being without him. The Bible tells us when he comes back, and it's not going to be long. In Revelation 9, 19, 16, on his thigh, this, this is the first time he comes back, it's going to be the rapture. That's going to be soon. And the next time he comes back, he's bringing us with him, and he's coming down on a white horse. And his, 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 his vest is going to be dipped in blood, and on his thigh, name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And then finally, we're getting really close. Brandon, come here and play something. Softly, bro. I love this. What the world needs is a stable influence. I watch all this unrest in the world, and one reason why there's so much unrest is because people are not really pulling together. Even groups that are trying to get things done can't even get it together amongst themselves. And because of that, there's no stability. You don't know what people want. You don't know what to do because everything's so full of unrest. It's so unstable. You can watch TV. You can watch what comes out of the Congress. You can watch what comes out of the Senate. You can watch what comes out of the White House. You can watch what comes out uh, of the state governments everywhere. You watch it, and, and it changes. It changes all the time. It's constant. No matter what party it is, no matter who it is, it's just all the time changing. There's no stability. The groups, there's no stability. It's always changing. And so you never, it's like trying to shoot a moving target. You don't know how to get that peace. The world needs a stable influence. Get ready, get ready, get, get ready to stand. When the Word became a child, the creator of the universe became one of us. He became one of us to die for us. He became like us to free us. He walked among us to guide us. He stayed with us to teach us. He rose from the dead to set us free. True rest is not the absence of conflict, but God's presence and God's power in the midst. Everybody stand. I was in Washington yesterday. 
and then by Piggly Wiggly, I'm Piggly Wiggly, I'm on the food line. And I kept hearing, it's like somebody's crop dusting. And I stepped out on the sidewalk and looked, they were having an air show. And there was a, probably no World War II plane. It was going up way up in the clouds. And it would do like this, it would twist around. And it would come down, twisting around. And it would look like it was going to hit the ground, it would come back up. Then it would turn all upside down. And then it would turn this way. And it would fly off and it come back and it just kept going every which way. It just never stayed steady. It was just constantly rolling, 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 rolling back and forth and up and down. The motor was, was trying to cut off several times and go up and it would start twisting. It come down and twist and it would come down. And all I can think of is this sermon here. It's like our world right now. No stability. I know he was doing it as a show. But as I saw that, I was thinking, man, oh man, that's how everybody's life is now. It's up and it's down and it's going around and if you don't have the stable influence, it'll drive you crazy. My matter of fact, if your faith, if your faith is led by your mind, watch this. If your faith is led by your mind, here's how your faith is doing every day. But if your faith is leading your mind, this is how you are every day. There's your mind, there's your faith. I don't know about you, but I don't like living like that. I like living like that. Doesn't mean things aren't happening, it just means I've got his peace. I've got his joy. I've got his wonder. I've got a stable influence. Life changes so fast. That's what it was. Life happens while you're, while you're busy making other plans. That's what it was. Life happens while you're busy making other plans. God's got us. This Christmas, let's not get focused. get and receive from each other, but let's focus on the greatest gift of all and our stable influence in this life that brings true peace. God is awesome. Now I want everybody, while you're standing up, bow your heads. Close your eyes. First off, is there anybody here that would say, Pastor, I, I'd like to have that stable influence, but I, I really, to be honest with you, I'm not sure I'm right with God. Do you, would you just stick up that hand? And, I'm not going to call you out. Bless them, Lord, bless them. Maybe you're here today, and you don't have that stable influence because you honestly let your faith be led by your mind and by what's going on around you. And your faith is shaky and you're ready for that stable influence when nobody's looking around just put that hand up quickly I, I need that stable influence I need that stable influence maybe, maybe you're here today and you just say you know what I, I got my mind all in the wrong places and I thank God And he keeps giving me opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to get it right. And I don't want to miss an opportunity today. Nobody looking around, everybody close, to put that hand up. I want to get that opportunity today. I want what God's got for me. All right, let's pray together. Father, I love you. I love you. I praise your name. I praise you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. To come into my life in a harder, more powerful way. God, I need your rest. I need your peace. Help me not to be led by events or by the unrest, but help me be led 
by my faith in you and by your rest that you give. I ask you right now to touch us, to help us hold on to that stable influence. In the name of Jesus we pray. And the church said, Amen, amen, amen. Brother Benny, would you dismiss us in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity we had to be in this your house today. Lord, as we go forth, let us take this influence that you have given us to the rest of the world, for they need it as much as we do. And Lord, be with us and guide us in each and everything we do in every step we take, so that we will live for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.